G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and wow, what a fantastic Brownlow count it was. I, I, I do find myself saying that a lot lately. It always feels like the one you're watching right now is the best one you've ever seen, but I think it's a real testament to the fact that they really make it a good showcase, and it's fun. It's so much fun, Brownlow Night, just following along, and uh, they do a good job of picking which games to do when. Obviously, they know the result in advance, but wow, that was thrilling right up to the end, and of course, Lockie Neal is crowned uh, Brownlow medalist for the second time of his career, which puts him in some pretty elite company. I think of some recent examples examples were Adam Goods and Nat Fife and I think oh Gary Ablett wow that is a, an esteemed group of players well done Lockie Neal I'm not sure if he was the betting favorite uh, but the uh, AFL.com uh, predictor got him right so I don't know how often they actually get it right uh, did they get Ollie Wines right uh, back in 2021 I don't know but it doesn't matter they got it right and uh, Lockie Neal is a very very worthy dual Brownlow medalist after a fantastic season and of course he's going into the grand final this weekend so amazing for him I feel like Lockie Neal is like one of those genuine nice guys in footy too. I mean, I don't really know him that well. I had one interaction with him uh, outside Metropolis Fremantle when I'm, well, I'm the same age as Lockie Neal and we must have been about 20 years old and we we're in the queue for the uh, nightclub and he walks past me with his girlfriend and he's wearing a white suit. And I don't really know what made me do it, but I went, look! And it felt like everyone in the queue sort of stopped and looked around and looked at Lockie Neal and I went, Harry Styles! The joke being there that he kind of vaguely looked like Harry Styles when he was younger and it looked like he was kind of having a fight with his miss. But regardless, he looked at me with his face and he goes, <laughs> so me and a dual Brownlow medalist are basically best friends. And now that I look back on that memory uh, and now that he's a dual Brownlow medalist, all I can think is, why did I do that? But anyway, very, very entertaining um, counts. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but I did a Brownlow predictor uh, and predicted my top 10 last week. And I got stupidly close for my with my prediction, my ridiculous prediction of a three-way tie between Bontempelli, Nick Dacos, and Lockie Neal. I predicted that as a bit of a joke. And I said that if one of them won, uh, I, I would have chosen Bontempelli. And it got very, very close with the last couple of games. There was Neal was tied with Dacos. Neal had a game in hand and Bontempelli Pelly was two votes behind and they were about to call his game. He ended up getting three votes, but if he had got two votes and Lockie Neal didn't poll in the last game, then uh, I would have had a three-way tie correct, which would have been insane. But I, uh, you know, I'm happy with Lockie Neal winning. Uh, you know, there, it's very hard to uh, really predict what's going to happen in these games. You know, I mean, there was a three-vote game for Lockie Neal where he had 20 possessions and there were three GWS players who got like between 35 and 41, but I can't remember the game, so I'm not going to be too critical, but that, you know, Bont can probably count himself a little bit unlucky there and as uh, as I made a point in my predictions video, he probably needed to win a few more games to genuinely actually win the medal. But uh, either way, we got a very, very worthy Brownlow medalist. So congratulations, Lockie Neal. So we can go through some of the results as I'll get it up here. Obviously, that's the top 10. And I got the top three in order right. Goulden did better than I expected. He polled really, really well in the back end of the year. And he polled five votes up until the bye. And then after that, he absolutely went nuts. Butters, I had fourth. He came fifth. Petrarca, I think I had ninth or so. And he was very, very close to winning the whole thing. He just uh, had a quiet last month of the season there. Sarong really finished well. Jeez, that's really good. Viney was the one that surprised me. Viney and Cripps, I think they're technically in the top 10. Um, and I had Noah Anderson, I think, in my top 10. I could be making that up. Maybe I didn't. I probably didn't, actually. I think I tipped him to be Gold Coast best vote getter. Um, but I had Rosie in my top 10. I think I might have had Sinclair or might have had Sinclair just out of it. And Dawson was definitely in my top 10. So, you know, kind of close to the mark. Some wins, some misses, but that's all right. You recall that I also predicted every vote, uh, every team's best vote getter as well. So we'll have a look at how I did. I tipped Dawson and Laird uh, did surprisingly well and drew with him there. Lockie Neal obviously won Brisbane's. Uh, Danaher was second, uh, which is interesting. Who else we got here? I think I had Dunkley as the second one. I had Kerno over Cripps. Uh, that one was pretty brave in hindsight. Cripps pulled, you know, surprisingly well. Was around the mark for top five for most of that count. Dacos was obviously the best one for uh, Collingwood. I had Zach Merritt as Essendon's best vote getter, and that was a little bit closer than I expected. Caleb Sarong was my bet for Fremantle, and that is exactly how that happened. Uh, GW West. This one I got wrong. I said Tom Green, and it was Toby. Green of the Toby variety, and I, that was dumb as well. I really should have realized that Toby Green is a good vote getter. Jeremy Cameron, I think, is a safe bet for Geelong. Yeah, that was my tip, although Danger did pretty well too. Noah Anderson was a distant winner for uh, the Gold Coast Suns. He had a really good season in terms of Brownlow votes. This one was another dumb one I had. I put Sicily as my prediction, and Newcomb was well and truly the biggest Brownlow vote getter. 
He had a really good season too. Uh, Petrarca, only just ahead of Viney. That one surprised me a little bit. I thought Viney would be the second best vote getter, but I thought it wouldn't be as close as that. Uh, North Melbourne's LDU, that one was pretty simple. Uh, Butters and Rosie, that one... I think Rosie during this patch here between like eight to the bye or whatever it was, he was expected to get like 21 of or 17 of a possible 21 votes and he got 11. Um, so had they been closer with that prediction, he would have qu quite comfortably won the Brownlow. So that's an interesting observation. Uh, who else we got? Taranto should have been Richmond's. I think, yeah, yeah, Shy Bolton did well as well. And then uh, the Saints would have been Sinclair for sure. Brad Crouch, Brad Crouch polled really well, actually. That's a pretty good season for Brad Crouch. Who else we got? Errol Goulden polled really well. Uh, I had him, I think, sixth in my prediction. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, I think we established he finished fourth, didn't he? Uh, West Coast, Tim Kelly was an absolute no-brainer. Um, as a team, we polled uh, 28 votes, whereas last year we set the record for lowest with 15. And then for the Bulldogs... You've got uh, Bontempelli over Liberatore, which I think was fairly easy to predict. So there you go, guys. That is a rundown of the 2023 Brownlow medal. Um, I wonder, if is it a good omen for the Brownlow medals to be playing in the grand final? I think previous examples. Dusty obviously won the premiership when he won the Brownlow. Who else has there been? My mind goes back to 0506, where Cousins won it in the year they lost the grand final, and then Goods won it in the year that the Eagles beat Sydney in the grand final. Did Ablett Jr. win it in 09 or 07? Either way... One of them was Bartel and one was Ablett. So those guys became premiers. I think if I keep taking a trip down memory lane there, I'm going to embarrass myself. But uh, maybe you guys in the comments can help me out. Uh, what is the track record of Brownlow medalists playing in grand finals and whether they win or lose? But as always, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of our new Brownlow medalist. Uh, let me know if you had a different idea of who should have won. Again, I, I still kind of wish Bont had won. I'm a big Bont fan, but Lockie Neal's hard to dislike. And winning two Brownlow medals is an incredible achievement. So congratulations to him. But look forward to hearing from you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.